this week's vlog. We're gonna feature one lure and all the things you can do with this lure. Now this is this particular lure is being featured on this coming episode of Fishing with Joe Booker uh, with Muskie 360 editor Stephen Paul. And it was a fish caught on my birthday. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Um, as we talk about this on this upcoming episode, I was editing it this morning and I was looking at it and you know, I thought, gee whiz, there's, it's amazing how lures like this, and, you know, my friends uh, throughout the musky industry have lures like this lure, you know, everything from the Suic, uh, you know, to the Bobby Bait and all kinds of great lures <clears throat> that are literally timeless. They literally are timeless. They continue to catch fish. They'll, they'll catch fish for generations. All it takes is for you to snap it on the end of your line, throw it out there and know what to do with it. Think about that. And that's all it takes. That's all it takes. With that in mind, I'm going to talk about this specific bait. And, you know, this is a, a lure I designed many, many years ago, decades ago. And, um, of course, it's it was designed off of many of the other great little bass-sized minnow baits that were out there for years. And what I um, what I learned as a bass fisherman, I've said this so many times, what I've learned as a bass fisherman, I always, you know, it always ends up applying somehow to musky fishing. And what I've learned from my bass fishing days, and of course, then I also take, by the way, the musky end of things, take it back into the bass world. And I, I have equal success doing that. But it, modifications. Modifications versus the situation. And I just want to feature this lure and this, of course, this color and everything about this bait because this is the bait that caught the fish on this week's episode. And what did I do to, to catch a fish? I was, I was in a slump. You'll, you'll see me talk about it in this episode. It was in a slump. And I broke the slump by just bearing down and thinking about what I needed to do to catch a fish. Dropping water temperature in the summer, never a good situation. Dropping water temperature, repeated cold fronts, no real warm weather, you know, peak throughout e a day. We had a lot of overcast, you know, that jacket with a hoodie kind of weather. When you get that in the summer, you know, it, it, it makes for a tough bite. And we haven't caught a fish on blades all week. I haven't caught a, a single fish on blades. Now, I'm fishing with good fishermen. You know, fishing with Steve and Paul, who's an excellent fisherman. I'm fishing with Tyler Andrews, who's also on camera. And we have not caught a single fish on blades, three guys, all week. And they were being thrown. Okay. One key thing before we move on to the, the specifics on his bait is anytime I have, uh, uh, anytime I have trouble moving fish on blades, generally, if I go to a, some kind of a crankbait, jerkbait style presentation, I will break that slump. And this is exactly what happened here. Now, water temperature kept dropping, kept dropping, kept dropping. And it seemed like the few fish that we caught were always bottom tight. And we get one or two opportunities a day and we caught some nice camera fish. But, you know, it was one of those things that um, you had to start thinking a little bit about, okay, these fish aren't following much. They're, they're not striking. They're definitely not chasing topwater baits and all this stuff. So we've got to get that bait closer to the fish. <clears throat> now, what I needed to do, what I started thinking throughout, throughout the day of fishing there to get myself out of the slump is that, you know, this water keeps dropping. I need to take the speed off of this presentation. So when I have dropping water and I need to take the speed off a of presentation, what do I mean by that? Well, if you have a buoyant way we design this lure, in fact, I'm going to take to show you this one here. This is right out of the box. And, you know, I caught the, the, uh, the Storm Titan on this, on, this, on this bait, same bait, right out of the box. And it works great, but it's much more buoyant with those light 3 aught trebles on it, okay? Now, I need to get rid of the buoyancy so that I could slow the bait down. I, would, I was working it primarily as a jerk bait, using my hybrid technique where I jerk it early in the retrieve, and then and with a lot of pauses, and then I finish up about 50% of my retrieve, I go into a straight crank and then, and then go into a figure eight, which makes, turns it into a straight crankbait and, and kicks up my percentage, my, my potential to catch a fish at both sides. That's why I'm not a, one of the big fans of that jerk and, and the, uh, the dead sticking technique because you catch, you catch some fish doing that, and I don't argue with that. But I catch more of them getting them on the eight, okay, with a straight retrieve. So this bait out of the box was not getting, was not, was not getting the fish to, to hit it. And why? Because the, the buoyancy 
made it come up too quick, and so I had to speed up the, 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 the presentation. What I need to do is put that bait in front of them and keep it there. Okay, how did I do that? It's so cool. And, and this is, all of you should, should always be thinking this way. And, 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 you know, I've even had some of you folks write me and go, well, why don't you just make them that way out, out of, you know, pr provide them that way out of the boxes? Because you want, you want to, you want to modify these lures per the situation. The, the lure right out of the box is fine the way it is <clears throat> for other situations. And the way a lot of musky anglers prefer to fish it. But if you want to catch fish in cold fronts, you need to slow this bait down. You need to slow the rise down. Okay. Or almost kill the rise. Almost kill the rise. How do you do that? One of the easiest ways to do that is upsizing your hooks, okay? Uh, you upsize your hooks, I got four odd hooks on here. And whenever I go up in, in hook size, you shorten the shank so that you, know, you, you, don't, you don't have these big hooks hanging too far below the lure. So when I go up in hook size, I go, I shorten the shank and the lure. I do like these wide beak um, inward bending hooks over rocks. And so these, you know, these baits, these, these hooks work great. By the way, this is a hook, um, this is a, the, several manufacturers make these hooks, several manufacturers. And so you, you just visit the Muskie shop and, and you can, and their website, and you can see there's all kinds of opportunities here and options for you in, in this situation. Well, the other thing I do is, is make sure that your split rings are a little smaller so that it also brings the, the larger hook tighter to the bait. And that will, just by itself, just by itself, just by going up in the hook size, just by going up in the hook size, you will decrease the buoyancy. Go down in hook size, you increase the buoyancy. And you want lure, that, that same lure to do different things depending on the situation. If you've got warming water and hotter fish and then a faster retrieve is triggering them, well, you, there's no need to go slow. You want to keep that bait moving and then a buoyant, and then when you're fishing over weeds, for example, any kind of cover, you want a, a boom, rise, boom, rise kind of a presentation because you want it to rise out of the cover when it hits it, especially over weeds, okay? So there's every lure, you know, can be broken down. And that's one of the key things you can do as an angler to become better at, 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 at your sport and, and, and to, to dial in your skills at another level is just take one lure. Take the lure you're weak at, okay? Or even your favorite bait and just figure out more ways to fish it. You find a lure that you're, that you're good with, find more ways to fish it. Find more ways to fish it so that you know you're productive with it in different situations. Okay, here's here's the other thing I did, and I've I've shown this in a couple other episodes, but I want to show you this too. It's right there. You can see that I, I attach plumber's tape to the bait, and again I learned this as a bass fisherman, and I've applied it to muskies, and then again I've applied it back. You know, so so um, you know adding plumber's tape. I've done this with walleyes, by the way, a lot. Where you know taking these minnow baits and slow them down for cold waters by adding these stick on lead tapes. And of course, in the, in the small lures, you can just, these little suspended dots you can put on there that you can buy. But when you're fishing a bigger lure like this, these the suspended dots just don't have enough weight to them to make a difference. Plumber's lead tape. <clears throat> it's got a stick on, an adhesive surface to it. And you just cut a, I, I always like to, to weight my, my shallow raiders. The other minnow baits can probably do the same thing, is I just like to find the balancing point. And what do I mean by that? Well, watch, see, watch this. Okay, that's not the balancing point. If I find that balancing point where the bait stays level, and I want the bait to stay level for the most part. If you find that spot, once you find that spot, do this and add a cut strips that length. Get that length nailed down and now cut strips that length and put them on there. One strip at a time. Fish it, you know, fish it for half an hour. You know, fish it for a couple spots. And, eh, I want to, you know, there's, there's too much weight in there, we'll take some of it off. There's not enough weight in there, we'll add another strip. And until you get what you want. Now, on this particular day that I caught this, this, this fish on this episode, you're going to see with Steve and Paul, um, this, th these fish wanted almost no rise at all. So, you know, I, I, as soon as I started hitting rocks, it just like, I'd hit the rocks and just go, and just leave it sit there, and it would just kind of hang in place. So if a muskie was nearby... But big musky sitting nearby, and this bait is going like this, and it's gone. You know, more often than not, in tough conditions, they'll just let it go by. And a lot of times, by the way, that bait is too high over the fish. But if you have a, a neutrally buoyant or almost neutrally buoyant, or even negative, depending upon the situation you're, you're fishing, I'm fishing over rocks. I wanted that bait to go down tight to the rocks, and then boom, and just kind of hang there. So this fish, all this fish had to do is 
and grab it. Okay, and when I'm in a situation like that, I add to add just enough lead so this bait is barely on the surface of the of the water. This bait is barely floating, and when the leader's attached to it, of course, that has a that's a factor too. And, you know, drop it in the water with your leader and your line, and everything attached to it, and watch it. And it depends on what you want. You know, it depends on what, on what you're looking for. When you got dropping water, and I've shown this on several episodes. There's another episode on YouTube called the Plumber's Trick. And it essentially did the same thing on a, on a Mid Lake rock, rock Reef in Wisconsin with Chaz early in the year. And it's just I wanted to find that neutrally buoyant. As soon as I started hitting rocks, I wanted to stay right there. And I, this has been a killer technique for me with walleyes, and it's a killer technique with muskies too. So take your favorite lure, modify it as a wrap up here. Take your favorite lure, modify it and do different things with it so that that favorite lure that muskies like and that you're confident with, you can fish it in more situations. And that'll improve your skills as an angler and you're gonna catch more fish. Hope you enjoyed this week's show.